This is the Yamaha RX V990. Or you could say the RX V990. This is a, uh, for some reason it's called a uh, stereo receiver, although it's a surround receiver, but I assume it's a stereo receiver because you only have stereo inputs. Unless you use an external encoder or decoder, um, you're out of luck. This is a beast. It weighs a little over 30 pounds. Um, transformer. Nice and big. Let's see, it's not tiny. Here's a comparison. An iPod. Touch, 4th gen. Nice and hefty. So, transformer. Filter capacitors are Elna Audio Grade 15,000 microfarads. Yeah, 15,000 microfarads. 63 volt electronics. The reason their tops are off look like a hack job because I did that. Their tops are bulging. They need to be replaced. Didn't know Elna made bad capacitors, although I'm sure it's just a, a bad run. They're not extremely bulging, but they're still bulging. The internals of the unit consist of what you'd expect. Transistors and capacitors and resistors and jumpers and potentiometers. This potentiometer and this potentiometer adjust the bias for the front, left, and right channel. Front, left, and right channel have Saken, or whatever you pronounce the brand, outputs. The center channel has no bias adjustment, except you, the thing is off spec, you clip that. These are the output transistors for the center channel. These are four and little order capacitors, which are still pretty big. These two are Nijikon, these two are I don't know brand capacitor. There are two big heat sinks. By the way, what that is over there, that is not a transistor, that's a rectifier. This one heats up the most, presumably because it has about eight transistors on it and some voltage regulators. These are resistors, 33 ohm, 2 watt resistors. They heat up and get hot as hell. Here is a DSP board and what I believe is also the preamplifier. You can see big jumpers. There are big jumpers here too. Anyway, those uh, 33 ohm resistors I was telling you about get so hot and they use light free solder. One was actually loose, so I took the whole board out and reflowed solder. In case you're wondering why the heat sink is so big and only had a few things on it and there's a solder pad right there, because the rear channel is provided um, with this amplifier I see. The SDK4141B stereo amplifier. This is the printed circuit board. I took it out to check the capacitors and to note them down. I also cleaned it with acetone to remove the flux. It seems most manufacturers dip the whole board in flux before putting solder. This is the front piano. Weird thing going on with the headphone jack. See capacitors and potentiometers. This is a potentiometer volume knob. It's also motorized so it moves with the remote control. Get my iPod out of there. For size comparison, I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I can drop it in there and get scared. Which is put it right there. There's a size comparison. Here's my foot. It's a big unit. Which is a good thing. Um, on the front, see you've got controls for volume. Um, power, tone controls, record out controls, input selectors, and all the Dolby effects, speakers A and B. It's a pretty good amp. Taking a look here at the back, reveals many inputs and outputs. Let's disconnect the volume thing so it doesn't break. Okay, there. You've got Finding tools. They're interesting though, they accept banana plugs or bare wire, but no spade gloves. You see that's what it kind of looks like. It's a weird finding post design. Hmm, specific to all Yamaha. So you have them for the rear, and you have notice two centers, D and D. Um, if you're poor and you only have two bookshelf speakers, you can 
press it in and have two center channels. Or if you just use one, two center. There's how you front, left, and right. And Inside, you have your tuner for AM and FM on the ground for your turntable. Phono, CD, tape. Uh, jumpers go right here. If you use it as a preamp, uh, you just uh, plug this into a power amplifier and use the volume knob. Or if you want to plug in a uh, preamp, you plug that. You plug that. Oops, sorry. Preamp goes here, and pre-out is for another amp. More things to use. And you can see this is Yamaha. All channels are 100 watts except the rear. The rear are 20 watts each. Again, massive power transformer. One heavy boy. So you got a circuit board. We've got quite a few of those. You got mostly um, here are the capacitors you have in the unit. Elna, which some are over there, some main filter caps Elna, Nijikon, and uh, Rubicon, as well as some unknown name brand capacitors, which uh, are going to be replaced. In fact, all capacitors are probably going to be Elna. Uh, somic capacitors. And that's what it looks like. Potentiometers. Oh, and I should point out this front panel is metal, not cheap plastic. This is what an amplifier should be built like, or a receiver. It should be built solid with high quality components. Well, the filter caps apparently aren't high quality, but it's alright. Have massive transformers, plenty of filter capacitance. I just find it weird how modern receivers are rated at 100 watts per channel times 5. They use a smaller transformer and much smaller filter capacitors. There's no way they'll get that far. So, and uh, again, this is for the rear channel. You can see this is what drives you get the 220 channels, conductors, resistors, and capacitors. and Pretty basic. That mounts this way in the board. So, that's a look at the Yamaha RX V nine hundred ninety.